The Mexican government has moved towards extraditing drug lord Joaquin Chapo Guzman to the United States after his recapture in Mexico on Friday. El Chapo managed to escape a safe house through drains and tunnels and steal a car before Mexican forces nabbed him as he fled. Footage of the operation on the safe house released on Monday show an intense gunfight that left five suspects dead. Guzman is now held at the maximum security Altiplano prison, the same prison he escaped from through a tunnel dug under his cell six months ago. He had also previously escaped from prison in a laundry cart in 2001. The United States had sought to extradite him before his most recent escape, but Mexico refused. The embarrassment of Guzman's getaway last year has raised pressure on the government of President Enrique Peña Nieto and sparked questions about its vulnerability to corruption. Guzman is said to have been aided by paid informants and accomplices on the inside. But his capture this time may have been his own doing. Mexican authorities say they were helped in their investigation by Guzman's communications while in hiding, including with actors. Sean Penn. Guzman apparently agreed to do an interview with Penn for Rolling Stone as part of a bid to turn his life story into a movie. He also reportedly had a strong personal interest in the Mexican actress who arranged the meeting, Kate del Castillo. In this excerpt from Penn's interview, Guzman responds to a question about the harms caused by drugs. Bueno, eso es una realidad. Well, it's a reality that drugs destroy. Unfortunately, as I said, where I grew up, there was no other way, and there still isn't a way to survive, no way to work in our economy to be able to make a living. Guzman is challenging his potential extradition to the U.S., a process that could take well over a year. His drug cartel is said to be one of the most powerful in the world, but it's unclear how much of an impact his arrest will have on a drug war that's killed tens of thousands in Mexico over the past decade. Advocates say if sensible drug laws were established in Guzman's chief market, the U.S. drug lords, like him, would not be in business. Well, for more, we're going directly to Mexico City, where we're joined by two guests. Laura Carlson is director of the Mexico City-based Americas program of the Center for International Policy. And Elena Poniatowska is with us, founder of the newspaper La Jornada, one of Mexico's most beloved writers. She is the recipient of the Cervantes Prize, the most prestigious literary prize in the Spanish language. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Elena Poniatowska, let's begin with you. Your reaction to the capture of Guzman and how he was captured. No, well, he's the king of tunnels, as you can see, and he was captured. I think he was followed by the Mexican government everything, every, where, ever since he, he uh, when he flew away the first time, no? And it's been, uh, they, uh, they treat it, they treat this event as if, as if it was a national victory, which is, it is not. It is only, I it is only something that distracts Mexico from the politics, the bad politics of a bad government. Laura Carlson, can you talk about what actually happened on January 8th, um, uh, how he was captured, what makes this difference uh, from his previous arrests and his two previous escapes? He was, he was captured in the, as you as you as we all know he was captured while he was escaping in in the north he's very well loved by people he's considered a, a hero by many poor mexicans that have benefited from him as in colombia colombians used to benefit on, of pablo escobar i mean the the I, really the the drug dealers become kings in Latin America, not only in Mexico, in Colombia, wherever they are, because they do what the government doesn't do. In many cases, they help poor people, and people love them. They are the kind of a Robin Hood, of course. So he was captured in his home state of Sinaloa, and the Army, the Navy, rather, which has been the preferred security force of the United States, and we've seen lately that it's the Navy that carries out these kinds of operations because they're more trusted and more supported with the cooperation from the U.S. government, moved in in a private re residence, again, 
as Mrs. Poniatowska mentioned, he's the king of tunnels, and so he escaped the shootout in the resonance and went down into the, into the sewage system. He then later came up through a manhole, took a car, and was captured on the highway. And one of the big differences we see in this case, compared to the capture previously in 2014, which many people, including myself, thought was probably the result of a prearranged agreement, is that he was really on the run. And there was violence in this one. There were five people killed, as opposed to the bloodless capture the last time. Uh, so it was. It looked more like an authentic operation. Yeah. And Laura Carlson, uh, can you talk about um, what you see as the significance of his capture and the U.S. requesting uh, his extradition, what he means in Mexico? This high-profile capture will have absolutely no impact, unless it's a negative impact, on the violence and organized crime caused by prohibition, both here in Mexico and in the United States. We already know this. The kingpin strategy of taking out the drug lords, the high-level drug lords, in order to supposedly dismantle the drug trafficking organizations and the illegal trade has never worked. And here in Mexico, it's well documented that it leads to more violence. What we often see is that a cartel faces turf wars, it faces challenges from rival cartels after a leader is taken out, and in some areas, the rivals see the, the parent cartel as weakened and or it suffers a process of fragmentation where smaller cartels break off and they turn out to be more violent and more dangerous to the public than the original one. So what we can really unfortunately expect from this is a setback and a setback in the sense that it's all over the news and the capture of El Chapo is presented as this huge victory and what it does is it reaffirms this drug war policy of the U.S. and the Mexican governments that's led to the death of more than 100,000 Mexicans. What could reduce the violence, Laura? There are a lot of proposals out there, uh, and one of them is, is legalization in the United States, because it's prohibition that creates these illegal markets that uh, are, of course, occupied by criminals, by definition. And so, as those are taken out of their hands, their financial empire is reduced, and they have less power to buy the guns, to recruit the young people, to buy the politicians, and to operate freely the way they do here. Another, of course, and this is something that Mrs. Poniatowska has written on, is, is ending the corruption. Because what we're seeing here is maybe a victory, but in a war that's lost. And it's a war that, in many ways, is not even being fought, because the Mexican government is so invested on all levels in organized crime that the impunity rates continue to be 98 percent. You can put somebody like El Chapo behind bars, but what about all the other criminals? What about the 26,000 disappeared who haven't been found? Those are the root problems that she mentions that were being distracted from because of all this media blitz on the capture of El Chapo. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but I wanted to ask you, Elena Poniatowska, to expand on Laura's point. Well, for the Chapo, it's worse. It's very bad for him as a man to be in prison in the United States, because in Mexico, you can get away from pr prisons very easily, and he can do it better than anyone else. And besides, prisons in Mexico are very different from the prisons in the United States. And here, a couple, be besides being admired by all the poor people, has many, many friends, and I'm sure he has friends in the government. Um, and before break, well, I wanted to get a comment from each of you on Sean Penn um, and the interview that he did with El Chapo, his secret meeting with him a few months ago, and um, whether you believe that it was uh, his meeting with him that led to his arrest, uh, Elena Poniatowska. Mm -hmm. uh, it's obvious it was. Sean Penn went to see him and uh, had an interview. Uh, through this new Malinche, this new woman who gives her country to, as Malinche did it to Hernán Cortés, to the Spanish conquerors, 
So she gives him, she has this opportunity. She's done movies on drugs herself. She, so she's a intermediaria. I don't know how you say it in English. No, she's the go-between. And she the intermediary. is the one who, yes, mm -hmm. she is that. She is the intermediary. Well, the go-between was a very beautiful picture, movie picture, and this is not very beautiful at all. No. You're talking about it's, Kate Del Castillo. It's, it's Del Castillo. Right, right. So this is another sideshow. And in fact, the attorney general said that it did indeed have to do with his capture. And what you see here is really uh, what happens when two massive male egos get together. El Chapo, in this case, wanting to do a biopic and smitten with the actress Kate del Castillo and Sean Penn uh, looking for the adrenaline shot the same way. But, of course, the response of Mexican people is like, OK, so how do two actors drop in on El Chapo Guzman, the most wanted man by the U.S. and Mexican governments, when both governments have been searching for him, oftentimes for months, for years? And again, that raises the question that the capture of El Chapo has never really been about how and these complicated and sophisticated operations, but simply when. And that's why Mexican people, and people are so skeptical about the timing of this and the fact that it could really have a lot more to do with raising the image of the uh, president, Enrique Peña Nieto, than with any huge victory in the drug war. Although Hollywood's been abuzz about Sean Penn's interview with El Chapo, some have begun to question the ethics around the article, which was published by Rolling Stone. Speaking at the Golden Globes, actor Alan Cumming questioned whether the article was really journalism or a celebrity stunt aimed at securing the rights to a biopic. But I don't know that it's... I don't understand how he and Rolling Stone can have sanctioned him going to meet that guy who was a, a, a wanted fugitive and, and then that then not to tell the authority. I, I, don't, I don't really know enough about it yet, but I, I do think it's a bit dodgy and I'm not sure that I think the idea of newspapers or magazines allowing correspondents to go and talk with people who are wanted for very heinous crimes. And, you know, I don't know. It's just... And especially someone who's a movie star. It can, I, the whole thing is a bit weird. But I'm sure it'll make a great film. I, maybe I'll play Sean. Or maybe I'll play El Chapo. I could do El Chapo. I can get a tan. I could pull it off. Me and Kate Blanchett could do it. She could play Sean. I'll play the drug dealer. <laughs> that was the actor Alan Cumming. Um, Elena Poniatowska, you're a leading journalist in Mexico. Uh, you are the founder of the newspaper La Jornada. Uh, you know, it may well be that Sean Penn and Kate Del Castillo's interview uh, with El Chapo led to his capture, but what are your thoughts? About what's happening? About the interview My and about thoughts? Sean Penn meeting with him. Well, I think it's a big show that is for Mexico that distracts us from the real problems. I think it's just uh, the capture many, I think, six months ago, no? It was, was, an, uh, was really uh, good news. It was news, and now it's just a story that you make up uh, for magazines. That's what it is, no? Afterwards, it will be a story for jokes, and it's a story. It's not. I don't think it has any real uh, depth or importance. Yeah, I think the journalist's ethics are highly questionable here. And in fact, I don't think that this started out or principally was a journalistic endeavor. I don't think that the article had really much to do with this meeting. This was about getting together a producer, because Sean Penn is primarily an actor and producer, not a journalist, and you can tell that by reading the article, and an actress, a beautiful actress, to talk about doing this biopic. So that raises even more journalistic questions. Yes. We're going to go to a break, and when we come back, we'll continue with our discussion. Laura Carlson, thanks for joining us, Center for International Policy. And Elena Poniatowska, we'd like to ask you to stay with us as we talk about the politics of Mexico. After that, we will come back to New York to speak with the man who filmed the death of Eric Garner. 
the only one to be criminally charged in Eric Garner's um, in this case are not the officers, but the man who filmed the death. Stay with us.